It's another Mark II golf day. Um, I've got quite a big job to do today. Sorry Lawrence, uh, I know these aren't your favourite. Um, ever since I've owned this, which is, well, last September, so just over a year, um, I've been aware that there is a heater issue. Now, the heater fan, which lives under here, has been changed. It's a lot of glare, I think my lens needs cleaning. Uh, has been changed. I changed that the other week because it packed up completely. But the issue isn't that. Um, the issue is common to older Mark II Golfs and it's to do with the um, the veins, the flaps uh, within the heater box behind the dashboard. Um, they are coated in the factory with a foam um, and the foam breaks down over a period of time and eventually loses its ability to do what it does, which is to seal the flaps and to divert the air into the directions you want it to go. For example, uh, the hot cold. So there's a flap that uh, allows cold exterior air in um, and then the further you move it over it mixes the air through the heater matrix and adds warmth to it. Well, whilst this blows cold at this end, it blows mildly warm at this end. And uh, a similar issue exists with diverting the airflow. Uh, this is slightly better. You can change where the airflow goes, um, whether it's to the windscreen or to your legs or to your, to your vents, but it's not brilliant. Um, so the time has come for us to remove the heater box, which is quite a big job, quite involved. It's probably going to take a couple of days to do. Um, and uh, take it apart, clean it, and recoat those um, diverter flaps with a suitable material, um, and then reinstall it. Also, while we've got the uh, heater box out, uh, we're going to change the heater matrix, which is a relatively inexpensive part and easy to change, I'm told, uh, once the heater box is out. So we may as well do that. It's for the sake of 20 quid or whatever it is, well worth doing. I'm going to clean the lens on the camera and then I'm going to get to picking through um, the best way of doing this. The first job I'm going to attempt is the removal of the heat event and yes I haven't cleaned the lens yet. The first job I'm going to do is remove the uh, under tray here and there's another under tray here uh, which are both going to come out after which I'm going to start at removing the centre console. Now being an automatic uh, it's a little bit more complicated than a manual I've just uh, removed all the duct tape that I knew was holding this on, which it was, um, and I assumed that they'd royally screwed it, and I've yet to prove differently. Um, I assumed also they'd lost the grub screw that's supposed to be in here, but as far as I can tell it is in there. So unless they've mullered this beyond belief, um, I don't see why it was taped on. I might just go and get an Allen key and just find out if it's just not understanding the system. But anyway, so I've just tightened the Allen head grub screw and that seems pretty conclusively on there. I, I think, I think it's just a case of the previous owner not understanding how it worked and they just duct taped it back on. I wish I'd looked at that ages ago because the duct tape was sticky and annoying. So the uh, plate that sits over there is literally push fit just gently get a screwdriver under the edge of it and gently lever it up and it comes up. Plastic housing has pegs here that look like they have to slide back out of here. There's also what looks like a retaining screw down here. That one screw has a remarkable effect. Once it's out, and I haven't got any further, but once it's out, the whole thing slides back. I can't believe that one screw is pretty much all that retains the centre console. I'm guessing there's going to be cables to the back of the um, cigarette lighter which I need to get at before I can remove anything. And there is, and it's easily removed. The whole console seems to want to slide back and out. I've had to put it in, um, I've had to put the uh, gear selector in the fully rearward position to give it movement. There are more cables of an unknown uh, use. I don't know what this thing is here. But it's something to look at a later date. It's not the cigarette lighter. So I'll look into that while I've got this apart. Turns out it's a relay of some some form. Um, it's held on with this metal clip here 
Um, so that will have to go back um, like so. Straight away on removing the centre console, I've noticed these um, square bits of foam. I'm not entirely sure where they come from, but I'll have to look into that as well. Mystery solved. Now that I've got the centre console out, I think the next job is to take these air vents out. Uh, it's so that we can detach the air hoses uh, that go into the heater box from back here. There are a couple of screws, one and two, um, which should, in theory, release those, but I do know that the um, plastic hoses are usually stapled to the plastic part of these, so it could put up a fight. But we'll start by taking the screws out and see how there are two clips, one there, one there. Once you've taken the screws out, you've got to gently lift each one at a time, tug on the centre bit, and the thing comes out. Um, to get the uh, vents out, put a flat, wide flat bit screwdriver in here, gently twist it, and then using uh, your fingers, tug the vent, <coughs> tug the vent, and it comes out. Uh, it makes life a lot easier if you take those out. Good opportunity to clean all this. And there we have the plastic tubes uh, which direct air from the air box up into uh, these vents. And you can see, you can see that galvanized plate with a hole in is one of the flaps I was describing, um, which is clearly missing its foam. Um, and as I move the controls, and that's these, this is the directional control. It changes that flaps and you can see the one behind it as well is also missing its foam. Um, is that there? Yeah that's the heat control vent. So yeah we're on the right track. But where I'm highlighting there that black plastic heading off at 45 degrees is the junction between um, this plastic unit here vent and tucked behind the wiring loom here there's another one heading up uh, towards there. They have to be disconnected but I think the easiest way of doing that is possibly to unscrew this plate here. So I'll move the light a little bit. You can see here there's a, a plastic nut and there's one at the other side here and I think if we undo that it'll take this whole fascia plate out and we should be able to wrestle those free. Getting them back in again is going to be one hell of a bastard but we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we have to. Plastic nuts off. Now it's time to find out whether this thing just... Oh, it's loose. That's good. So now I think we've got to do some wrestling. And again, I won't show that on camera because they'll be swearing. Um, but the idea, I think, is to pop it off these and then kind of pull the whole thing down and out from underneath the dashboard. Uh, like I said, it's going to be worse getting it back in, but we'll cross that bridge. So a torch is needed, really. But uh, if you start at the driver's side where you actually have access to grab the pipes, you can just gently twist them back and forth and it pops off. Pull it out the way and then it allows you to wiggle this whole unit and it popped off and hopefully, <laughs> I'm not out of the woods yet, but hopefully we should be able to wrestle this free. This bracket is being a bit of a pain in the arse, um, but uh, I'm basically just going to squeeze it up under that and hopefully it'll come out. Okay. So the vent uh, front is out, it was a shit to get out and it's going to be a bastard to get back in. Interesting to know that all the foam on this thing is disintegrated. This is all turned to cheese, literally it feels like wet and tacky. Alright, another step closer, so you can definitely see the vents now. So the next job is I believe getting this box out. No it's not. The next job is the heater controls. They have to be disconnected or taken out so that we can take the whole box out, cables and all. The vent and the stereo just pull out nice and easy. Um, I believe the next job is to undo these screws and this will free up the cable control unit. We should then just flop about and be able to be withdrawn. Three screws and that now, as far as I can tell, is free and should withdraw with the heater box when we eventually get to that point. I think I'm going to remove this um, kind of foamy plastic shield just so I've got a better view of what we're doing and then I think we're moving under the bonnet. Okay, oddly, 
Volkswagen have used this weird thumb screw nut that that lives up that lives behind and above the blower motor up on that little uh, screw thread there. Um, I needed to start it with pliers. It's not socket shaped, so you just have to go for it. Now we're in the engine bay, we need to unscrew or unbolt that bolt there. We need to unbolt that bolt there, and I'm pretty sure this one as well needs to come off. Um, and it is holding on this uh, vacuum control valve, which I'm still not entirely sure what that does. I'm not even sure if it works. Um, so that's three we have to take off. I'm going to unplug the coolant system from the heater matrix, which are these two clips here, and they pull off the back of the matrix inlet and outlet pipes. Okay, next up is the removal of this, um, which uh, is one screw this side, one screw mating the other side, and one screw at the top here. That had to kind of be wiggled out. All this needs a really good clean. Right, so that's the foot heater component. Okay, so I'm starting to hit the wall now. Um, I was struggling to get the heater box out. Excuse the lighting, but light, daylight is failing. I'm always battling daylight this time of year. Um, it just seemed to be hooked up. So what it turned out to be was the uh, plastic that um, joins to the dashboard uh, windscreen vent it needs to be unscrewed, two screws. Once that's done, it looks like the whole thing kind of wants to pop itself out. They never show you this in YouTube videos or tutorials, or whatever, but I'm telling you now, you need to unbolt everything. Um, it's quite a long job, this. Uh, I would allocate at least two days. Um, kind of the best part of the day to get it out and possibly fix the airbox, and another day to get it back in. Um, I'm going to continue to take this out now and if there's any more hang-ups I'll let you know. The other thing is all the insulation on these cables and stuff, not insulation, it's like anti-rattle foam I suppose, it's just falling to bits, it's, it's dust really. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the heater matrix out, um, that should make our life a little bit easier. Um, I think it's one screw, which is this one. See the, this is the original one because the data manufacturer is 791. I'm going to retain that screw. I think there's two clips, hopefully not too brittle. And the whole thing should just, <laughs> just pull out. It's been chewed up by these clips. Worth noting. Come on. Right, it's hanging up on the clips on the actual heater matrix fins. But there we go. The next job is to undo the clips that hold on the fan shroud to the whole heater box. Um, I think they're just spring clips. Just spring clips. I'm hoping that they will just, yeah pop off with a screwdriver. So again, don't want to lose those. I'm going to put them in the magnetic tray. Is that all of them or have I missed one? I think. Yep. <laughs> That answers that question. So, just other than cleaning this, there's not a lot we have to do with that. Now, there used to be this foam. There is now just disintegrating bits of crap, and most of it's gone. Uh, it just blows out through the heat heat vents over time. So the job is to split the box, get these plates out, recoat them, and then put them back in. There are many YouTube videos on this, um, so don't take this as a how-to, just as yet another reference to it. The controls are generally underneath, so I'd like to leave those alone, preferably leave them face down. So I'd like to split the less complicated top of the box off 
so that we can remove the plates. Uh, the only complication to that that I can see is that this control cable here for the um, windscreen vent um, is sort of attached to the top half of the box. So I'd like to unclip this and leave this free floating. Um, it'll also take some of the tension off the cables, I think. I think again it's another spring clip. It is. And that just frees that up. Now that the cable's been dealt with, um, I've noticed it's a combination on here of uh, there's a couple of spring clips, or at least one, two, two spring clips. Two spring clips and the rest are like clip together clips. So I'm just going to take the spring clips off. I'm not really looking forward to this next bit which involves basically these plastic clips to go all the way around. Um, I think they were supposed to be one way clips so you know, the tangs go in but that's it they're kind of locked. I think I have a method unless I've just got lucky. So use a pair of um, plumber's grips and carefully just press together. You watch it'll break now. But it seems to just want to push these clips apart. They're almost friction driven. I don't think you need anything clever at all. Um, so you just kind of push the two part halves apart and they want to kind of separate. It doesn't take a lot of force either, he says. Yeah, that seems to be working. He says, having an old one up. Right, I'll work my way round, just popping those. I've been round and worked round all the clips. I did break one of them, uh, unfortunately. I was ham-fisted with it, um, and I snapped it. But I don't think it's going to be an issue for us. There are plenty of other clips holding this box together. Uh, now I'm just um, working around with a screwdriver and gently prising it apart. And before I do anything, after I take the lid off, I'm going to take a photograph and just mark the positions of the plates so that we have a reference point for putting it back together again. I'm gently doing it with a screwdriver because I don't want to just pull it and have everything fly apart. I think it feels like we're there. Right. Let's just gently pull that apart. Okay. There's no bushings or bearings inside, but there are bushings on top of these plates. Okay, so that's the top half of the unit. I'm just going to take a photograph so I have a reference point. Let's start with a small one. Does it just pull out? What happens? Yes, it just pulls out. There's like a slot that this plugs into. And I guess the top's the same as well. Yes, it is. We do not want to lose those. So that's one. And then number two. Okay, it gently does it. Number two, you can see what's left of the foam there. That's all that's left of it. No wonder we don't have any heat in the car. And then the third one is the flap, and that just sits in its plastic bracket. I might put silicone grease on some of these just to keep keep everything moving. Right, I think the next job is to clean these boxes out. Right, I'll bring you back when I've done that. I lied. The next job is to get these done because I'm running out of daylight hours and I'd like to get the foam up back onto these. So I'm going to clean these up with um, brake cleaner and then I'm going to get on to re-foaming them. I've um, bought some uh, 2mm neoprene self-adhesive foam. Um, I am going to cut it to size. Thank you. 
Right, give that five. The plates themselves uh, were degreased with brake cleaner. Um, any old uh, residue of um, the old adhesive taken off. They were then given a coating of Trimfix um, and the self adhesive neoprene. I was going to stick straight to that, but then I opted at the last minute to give that a coating of Trimfix as well. Um, don't ask me why, because I spent extra on getting adhesive coated um, neoprene, but you know, I don't know. This stuff's good to 120 degrees, so uh, that should be good enough for our airbox. So, yeah, um, it is... Oh, good, it's touch dry now. Yeah. So I cut this to size earlier. Clearly not well enough. That is supposed to... Bollocks. Bloody cut that to size and it's not fitted. Got a bit of a gap there. I'm not sure it's going to make much of a difference. Oh, good shot, Richard. I even tested it before I applied it. The next one is going to be the small flap. Everything's a learning curve here. This is really weird. I cut everything to size and yet it seems to have shrunk down. Oh, I'm not happy. I'm not happy for whatever reason. Maybe the adhesive has caused this to shrink down. Oh, that's bloody annoying. Well, why don't we cock up all three and see what... This one I actually cut oversized, so fingers crossed. This one will actually flip and fit. Can't believe I've gone to all this effort today only to bollocks it up at the last minute. There's the beauty of cutting it oversize. Is there any shrinkage? I think it must be the adhesive that's called shrinkage because when I uh, dry fitted them, they all fitted perfectly. But this one is only just oversized and I cut it quite a bit oversized. So yeah, so if you're using neoprene, cut oversize and then trim it down afterwards. Oh, how annoying. I think I'm just gonna infill with a bit of um, bit of extra neoprene. Right, so I've cut a straight line down on the edge that didn't quite meet on this flap, um, masked it off, applied trim fix to it. Um, I've cut a thin slither of neoprene, which I've also applied trim fix to. And as soon as this has finished tacking up, I'm going to stick that in its place. Let's see if we can get it right this time. Remember to cut oversize this time. Lovely. And once it's back in the box, nobody will know that I messed that up. I am just in the process of trimming down these uh, neoprene parts. And again, just going back to these Alpha blades, they just are superb. You cannot fault them and worth every extra penny. You can see my repair on the back of it, um, and that will make no difference. The operation is just a pride issue. Um, we've got the larger flap, um, again wrapped in 2mm neoprene. 
you could probably go slightly thicker but I don't think it's necessary um, it's just to stop the air whistling through all those holes which the foam originally um, held up I have just um, cleaned the box out and cleaned the outside I dry brushed it um, no liquids make sure that's uniform Um, so now it's a case of re basically reversing what we just did and this is where I rely on my photograph um, so this one is the fairly easy one that drops into that gap there Next flap is this one. And the next one, or the last one, I should say, is this one. in like that. Right, this has been dusted as well, so this needs to go on top and I need to get these lined up with the holes in the top of this. So this is the air coming in from the fan motor, it gets diverted around through the heater matrix and then back into the system for hot air and for cold air it goes straight through avoiding the heater matrix. I'm just reattaching this cable before I forget to do that and install the whole thing. And that would be impossible to do I think from the installed position. So, Alright let's test these flaps work. Wow, new work. What isn't working? This is why we test. Okay, a word of note is that this cable is clamped by this clip and it has to be set in the right place. Um, I was lucky that there were witness marks where this has been sat here for a long time, but it might be worth noting on dismantlement that um, uh, the position this clip sits at. Now we have working flap. Right, it's brand new heater matrix time. Uh, I honestly think this was around about the 20 quid mark. It was not expensive. But yeah, brand new um, aftermarket heater matrix. I might just compare it to the, uh, to the original one and see how it looks. Right, the original OEM one. Hello Nimbus, are you joining us for any particular reason? Uh, <laughs> I get fur off it. The original OEM one is only different in the sense, get, oh you are a pain. Are you? Very pain in the ass. Come on, go. Right, the only real discernible difference I've noticed is that the OEM one has a uh, neoprene gasket that runs around here which is presumably to seal any airflow from coming up and out. Um, but other than that there's the same number of cores, it's the same dimensions. Um, this looks like a direct copy really. Uh, so I'm going to put the um, included, what did Nimbus do with it? I'm going to put the included um, foam edging around there um, to help seal the air within the heater matrix as the air passes through it and then insert it into the uh, into the orifice. Right. I think it's slightly annoying these clips, they damaged it on the way out. They're gonna pull the foam on the way in as well I think. A little for a penny. Actually that's not too bad. There you go. 
and Knobhead here has put it in back to front. Right. Okay, do not do what I just did and insert the uh, matrix the wrong way into the housing. Uh, it's easy to get tired and just mess up basically. So removing it tore up all the so removing it again tore up all the foam. So luckily there was enough left over to put in a patch there, but it's just really embarrassing. So don't do what I just did. Right, double check. This is the back, this is where the hoses should be. Don't mess it up. That should not have been that difficult. Right, and don't forget to put the screw back in as well. And we've got a new uh, purchase separately foam gasket that goes between the Haker matrix and the uh, bulkhead. There are two clips to reinstall on the heater box. Luckily, this is the side with the broken clip, um, clip on it. Bright and early the next day. Bright and early the next day, and um, we're happy with the way that the heater box has gone back together. The motor shroud is currently drying in the kitchen where I've cleaned it off. Uh, and now I'm going to look at these other bits of plastic that uh, we took out um, yesterday in order to get the heater box out. And as you can see, the foam rubber around these seals is absolutely shot as well. You press it and it doesn't bounce back and it just wants to disintegrate effectively. Um, so I need to come up with a solution for a replacement. I'm tempted to go down to screw fix and see if I can get some um, what do they call it weather strip for windows um, and uh, fit that around these joints. There's a couple of places. There's, a, there's another bit on the um, on the motor shroud as well that could do with some um, and despite the fact it's probably going to be about five or six quid for a 20 meter roll of it, it may well fulfill the needs better than say building up neoprene, although that is an option as well because I've got plenty spare. Yes, I know it's brown, but I couldn't get black locally. I will just go and find some um, door weather seal. Um, and the reason I'm going for this, rather than cutting my own stuff out, is because I'm being lazy and it's self adhesive but it's also uniform thickness um, it's slightly narrower than anything I've actually got in stock and it does conform I believe to what we're looking for and unfortunately I couldn't get black but I don't think it really matters it's just a, an aesthetics thing that no one will ever see I'm just being a bit OCD about it Oh, and as a side note, the brown stuff is more bloody expensive than the white or the black. Right, hopefully that will cut cleanly. Get on. There we go. Right, hopefully that will act as a very suitable replacement. For the missing foam rubber and it compresses nicely so hopefully that'll do us. Right I'm going to do this one as well. The weather strip seal takes up the gap and then gets compressed by screwing down the two plastic washers or nuts we took off earlier and that should just make a nice air seal there. At least I'm getting my money's worth out of this weather strip. It's quite useful stuff and it's got a really good adhesion to it, especially on this plastic stuff. Right, I'm going to reassemble this to the, the box and then we're going to start thinking about putting it back in the car. I'm not used to this, 
but this is going in far too easily. Um, and I don't know if it's because I now understand how it fits or whether I just got a lucky shot and it popped straight into the place it's supposed to be. Um, I mean, effectively, it's four, six, six points that have to line up all at the same time as well as balancing something on top of it. Um, I'm not going to count my chickens, but so far it's looking good. Okay, so the top air vent is up and sealed in place and I've loosely screwed that into the bulkhead. You can't see anything. And I've loosely screwed that into the bulkhead, but I want to leave some free play. The air box itself, again, has a little bit of weeble wobble to it. That hopefully allows us to start building in some of the plastics and give us some wiggle room. Um, and then when we're happy that everything's loosely in place, we'll start tightening stuff up. Having the whole unit loose has allowed me to easily wiggle this bottom um, blower vent back into place. Um, so it was a wise choice leaving everything slightly loosey-goosey. Each controls back in and we'll just check that they're working. That's that one. I do a bit of grease on these but I didn't want to grease them until everything was back in place. Good. Now the fun bit, uh, we've got to get this air vent back into place. Uh, it may go in or it may not go in. We'll find out in a second. I knew this piece was going to be an absolute bastard to get back in. Um, I'm going to attempt, I mean, I've had several goes, several different directions and it's just not fitting. I'll probably end up destroying something if I'm not careful. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to un do those staples that are holding the air vents on there um, and then see if I can uh, get, see if that buys me a bit more room okay after much swearing and I mean a lot of swearing I must get the four staples out of these they're stainless steel and they're put in by the world's strongest machine so hopefully this will give us a bit more clearance maybe we'll be able to get this back in without damaging anything it's taken some rage and I definitely need some time out on the naughty step, but I've got it in. Um, so I'm going to uh, attach it to its various vents at the side and then I'm going to refit the air vents at the front. I may leave them loose, I think the staples are there. I don't know exactly what they're doing, we'll find out in a minute. Right, uh, I've got the plastic nuts on. Maggie's come to help and inspect the work. What do you think, Mags? All up to standard. Okay, um, the air vents are still out, but I'm now going to tighten up the um, air box from the engine bay and pull it all tight against the bulkhead, and then we can now uh, get on to buttoning this down. Okay, time to install the vents. Um, but another known problem with these is that the foam rubber that seals the vents when they're closed disintegrates. Um, so I'm actually thinking. If these come out easily, I might just put in strips of that neoprene um, and if I make them long enough, they should just block up the vents. It's an idea. I might give it a go while these are out and see how it works. So I pulled the disintegrating foam out of the air vent. Um, it is in multiple pieces, but I've just reassembled it. What I'm going to do is gently spritz it with a bit of, um, I don't know, paint or something, something fast drying and then use that template to then cut out um, neoprene rubber um, equivalents of it. One rough template to cut around. Okay, I've been around and I've seated 
the neoprene into its base as best as I can. You can see the oversize that we cut. I'm going to trim this down now and then hopefully that'll that'll do us. Right, that's trimmed to shape. Um, I'm going to fit it back into the housing and check that it works. If it does, then I'll replicate it with the other one um, and eventually replicate it with the two outer vents as well. Nice positive lock. Full seal around the outside. Pleased with that. I'm going to do the other one. In comparison, the other one, you can see daylight coming through it. Whereas this one, there is nothing. So that's what we're aiming to do, is to cut off the airflow through there. I think that was worth a little extra effort. A little bit, um, a little bit stiff at the moment, but I think this one already has loosened up a little bit. Next job is to replicate the four sponges that um, fell out when we took the centre unit out, the centre console out. Um, they were intact and then they turned to dust. They literally turned to dust. Right, we need to replicate the sponges that were on here. Um, they're square and they have square holes. I don't think they're an exact thing. Um, I've been and bought some bathroom sponges. The idea is just to basically cut a square of this, cut a square in the centre, adhere it in there and um, that will take up the gap between this unit and the, the vents that blow out of the um, centre console. Lovely. One more to make. Some very, very sticky double-sided tape. And there we go. Those cars will confuse the next person in there. Put the fan motor back in. The motor shield has been put back in. Now it's time to reinstall the centre console, remembering to connect the uh, relay and the cigarette lighter power. The console slipped into place perfectly, so that's now ready for gear selector. Nearly there, we've got the under trays fitted on the dashboard. Right, uh, that's everything back together again. That's been the best part of two days uh, work. Um, so yeah, it's time to do a quick systems check, make sure everything's working. We'll start with the radio, which doesn't work very well. So that's working. Make sure everything's on. Ignition, check, blower. One, two, three. Get a much stronger breeze out there than I did before. Okay, what do we got? Change it to feet. And yep. I'm getting a breeze, quite a good breeze actually, from the feet vents, and there should be some coming out, where is it, here, yep there's a little bit coming out here, that's what we'd hoped for, but the majority is coming out where it's supposed to in the vent here, excellent, right the next bit is both face and feet. Actually shuts off properly. This one, and if you turn it off, you get a lovely noise. So that's going to be the next job, I think. Sort that out. Okay, and then third, uh, third, fourth, fourth, fourthly, straight as. So 
we've got a good breeze coming out here. Got a good breeze coming out here. both of these. Nothing, or barely a whisper coming out of here. Again, nada. Now we've got it. It's full flow. Excellent. Lighting check, the lights are working here, that's good. I'm not going to check the cigarette lighter, I'll do that later. Okay, and now it's time to fire it up and see if we get nice warm air coming out. Turn you off. So we have it, after a successful test drive, we're up to full running temperature. Um, I have full heater controls, so I've got them all back, windscreen, feet, mix of feet and face and face, um, so yeah, amazing. I've got hot air, so hot that honestly, it hurts to hold your hand by the heat event, it's ridiculous, and uh, all the different um, amount of blending you want, so cold's back, well we never lost cold, but cold's there hots there and everything in between um, and obviously full controls the only criticism I have about what I've done is the fact that I've used neoprene which is a non porous material so it doesn't allow any air to flow through it as a material which means that on full chat with full motor power it's really difficult to push that past the face setting. That's basically the point where you're, I mean, everything else is fine, but just that, and even getting it back is, I don't want to push it to my braking. As soon as you drop it down a level, it becomes normal, but I think just the airflow, the air power coming through there is causing the flaps to basically be held shut or open. So bear that in mind, if you're doing this yourself, you might want to use a material that is more like like a sponge rather than neoprene. However, having said that though, the amount of hot air I'm getting out of this is just phenomenal. Absolutely pleased to bits with it. So other than that slight niggle of full power and then this basically being very difficult to slide and control, um, yeah, perfect. This vehicle hasn't had hot air since I bought it, so Big job, a big job, but well worth it.